Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Luther Church in St. Morgan. It is Thursday, the 23rd of July, and of Domini 2020. And tonight, our psalm is the 109th psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be not silent, O God, of my praise. For wicked and deceitful mouths are opened against me, speaking against me with lying tongues. They encircle me with words of hate and attack me without cause. I return for my love, they accuse me, but I give myself to prayer. So they reward evil for good and hatred for my love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. Excellent, O Lord Jesus, is your love which you have shown towards us in that you came into our flesh and suffered with such contradiction of sinners against yourself, Grant us a will to so conform to your will that we do not fear the hatred and mockery of the wicked, but suffer ridicule patiently, following you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And tonight we take a look once again at the small catechism. Tonight is the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and His Word, but hold it sacred, gladly hear and learn it. And again, we'll take a look at what Luther's large catechism says, and we'll start with the preface. Note, Luther begins by defining holy day and by explaining how by Christ's time, the true understanding of the Sabbath had been corrupted because the third commandment describes Jewish practice of the Old Testament. Luther plainly states that the external form of this law does not apply to Christians. It is an error to say that the Sunday is the New Testament Sabbath. Christians should regularly devote themselves to a day when they can hear and learn God's Word so that they do not despise it. For this reason, Luther commends worship on Sunday for the sake of good order. In this sense, every day for the Christian should be a holy day consecrated by God's Word. Luther presents a clever play on words when he suggests there is only one holy thing. The German word for holy things, Heiligetum, was often used to refer to relics, items believed to have, that have been believed to belong to the apostles and other saints. Yet, Luther says the only true holy thing is God's Word, which consecrates all things apart from which nothing we do or say is holy. So, we begin. You shall sanctify the holy day. The word holiday is used for the Hebrew's word Sabbath, when, which properly means to rest, that is, to cease from labor. Therefore, we usually say to stop working or sanctify the Sabbath. Now, in the Old Testament, God set apart the seventh day and appointed it for rest in Genesis 2-3. He commanded that it should be regarded as holy above all other days. This commandment was given only to the Jewish people for the outward obedience, that they should stop toilsome work and rest. In that way, both man and beast might recover and not be weakened by endless labor, Exodus 20, verses 8-11. Later, the Jewish people restricted the Sabbath day too closely and greatly abused it. They defamed Christ and could not endure in Him the same works that they themselves would do on that day, as, they, as we read in the Gospel, Matthew 12, 11. They acted as though the commandment were fulfilled by doing no manual labor whatsoever. This, however, was not the meaning. But as we shall hear, they were supposed to sanctify the holy day or day of rest. The commandment, therefore, in its literal sense, does not apply to us Christians. 
it is entirely an outward manner, like the other ordinances of the Old Testament. The ordinances were attached to a particular customs, persons, times, places, but now they have been made matters of freedom through Christ Jesus. Colossians 2, 16-17. The simple-minded need to grasp a Christian meaning about what God requires in this commandment. Note that we don't keep holy days for the sake of intelligent and learned Christians. They have no need of holy days. We keep them first, first of all for bodily uh, causes and necessities, which nature teaches and requires. We keep them for common people, maidservants and manservants, who have been attending their work and trade the whole week. In this way, they may withdraw in order to rest for a day to be refreshed. Secondly, and most especially on this day of rest, since we can get no other chance, we have the freedom and time to attend divine service. We come together to hear and use God's word and then praise God and sing and pray. Colossians 3.16 However, this keeping of the Sabbath, I point out, is not restricted to a certain time, as with Jewish people. It does not have to be just on this day or that, for it is itself no better than any other day, Romans 14, 5-6. Instead, this should be done daily. However, since that the masses of people cannot attend every day, there must be at least one day in the week set apart. From ancient times, Sunday, the Lord's Day, has been appointed for that purpose. So we should continue to use that same day in order that everything may be done in an orderly way. 1 Corinthians 14.40 and no, and no one may create disorder by starting unnecessary practices. This is the simple meaning of the commandment. People must have holidays. Therefore such observance should be devoted to hearing God's word so that special function of this day and rest should be the ministry of the word for the young and for the mass, and for the poor people. Nehemiah 8, 2-3, and verse 8. Yet the resting should not be strictly misunderstood to forbid any work that comes up which cannot be avoided. And we'll stop there. So the point of the Sabbath versus the worship day. A day should be set apart. A day of rest. That's what Sabbath literally means. A holy day. A holiday. A day where one allows themselves to recuperate, but not that they just sit around, but that they should be nurtured, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I guess we won't use the word both there, but in all three ways we should be nurtured. We should be refreshed by the Word of God. And so we set aside Sunday, the day of new creation, as the day in which we gather to worship and be filled by God's gifts, by His Word and His sacrament. And it doesn't say that we shouldn't be in His Word every day. For the Word produces in us faith. It gives us strength. It fills us up. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. And so we go to God's Word, but we set aside a special time on Sunday mornings where we can gather together, hear God's Word, and be filled by His words. Hear His blessing hear his forgiveness. And so the Sabbath day is a day of worship. It is not to be treated as law, but as a gift. When God gives us his gifts, his blessing, and his love. And I pray that you join us Sunday at 10 a.m. Messiah Lutheran Church, Salem, Oregon, where God pours out his spirit upon us. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And I pray you have a pleasant night's sleep in our Lord Jesus Christ.